what jobs I do and don't take. Tons of people call me where I tell them, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Lots of times, the reason that I don't want to work on something or can't work on something might be because I just know the job well enough to know that I don't have the equipment. Maybe I'm missing a special tool. Maybe I'm missing certain equipment. Uh, maybe I know that there's going to be something broken on this job that that is going to be really difficult to get undone. All the European cars, the reason that I still don't work on them is because they're dumb. I don't like working on them. They're so different. I can get away with a basic metric set of sockets and wrenches with... So this is very important. Somebody's calling me right now and you got to take the calls. All these European cars need special star bits and you look at the way things are set up and it, it just boggles the mind. Why is it that you guys have been making making these cars all complicated on this continent, but then we go over to Asia and all the cars are super simple. All the cars are super simple and they last longer. They A lot of times they look just as good, but they're easy to work on and you don't have to work on them as often. It's just less frustrating whenever I... It's, it's easier for me to tell the person, sorry, I don't work on European cars. I don't work on that car. I'm not interested in working on cars that are built poorly. I don't mind working on cars that stuff wears out. Everything will wear out eventually. But I'm not interested in working on cheap junk that is overpriced. Little smart cars and Mini Coopers and and other crappy cars because it doesn't like you some people's logic might be oh i make a lot of money off of these cars because they need work a lot but how do you think it is dealing with those customers do you think that that it's just only rich people own these cars no it's just normal people and they can't afford these cars but they buy them anyways and then they get okay right now i'm sitting here trying to work trying to make this video and it's a perfect example of a job i won't take it's somebody calling with an old piece of junk uh, rv and like you've seen them they're they're basically relegated to, and I'm not saying everybody who has an old RV is a crackhead, calm down. But you, if you live on the West Coast, these are basically crackhead mobiles, all right? People live like along the Pacific Coast Highway in these uh, old 80s RVs, and they're trash, okay? They run like crap, and I don't like old trucks at all, okay? So if you don't like that, put that in your pipe and smoke it. But I don't like these old carbureted trucks. They are finicky. I like cars that are reliable. I like cars like Toyota, where things will wear out and I'll fix those things and then eventually something else will wear out and we'll fix that. But it's not just failing prematurely. You don't look like the hero whenever the customer's vehicle has to keep coming back. That's the whole point. When you're seeing your customers all the time and they only have one or two vehicles, that doesn't make you look good. That makes you look like, like you become the bad guy. Even if you're not the bad guy, the, your customer is giving all their money to you. That doesn't make them happy, okay? And that doesn't make me happy when my customers go broke on these old RVs and these old freaking uh, foreign cars. A lot of times people will call me with uh, diagnostic issues. So if somebody calls and says, hey, my car is making a noise, I 100% of the time, I, I want to take those jobs. I can find noises. You know what I mean? I can usually find noises. Uh, hey, my car is leaking. Come find it. Yes, I want to come and find the leak. Uh, all right. I don't want to come right now, though. So sometimes people will be like, hey, can you come and figure out where this leak is coming from right now at like eight o'clock at night uh in in a parking lot somewhere 
and you got to be careful all right and you got to know your city you got to know what parts are dangerous and what parts are not dangerous because even if it's a nice person calling me if they're calling me from downtown phoenix in the middle of the night i'm not going to go because it's dangerous because even if they're nice there's 100 people that are dangerous you know in your vicinity because there's just hordes of bums downtown depending on how busy i am that can affect what jobs I take. If I've just got tons of work lined up that's really easy, I might be more hesitant to put a, a, a potentially complicated diagnostic on the schedule. I want to look like the hero, all right? Somebody is in an emergency, I come and save them. Somebody has a problem that they just can't figure out, I come and diagnose it and then fix it and then we're good. What other kind of jobs don't I take? Well, a lot of it uh, will come down to, uh, like, can I live with myself? All right, I can pick whatever jobs I want and do them for whatever price I want, but that that basically lets me be picky. So I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna take jobs from people who waste my time. That's, that's like, like this guy, since, since he's interrupting my video, let's put him on the spot. He's calling me. He called me this morning about this old RV. I said, I'm sorry. I don't work on them. Called me again just now. Sorry. I don't work on them, but still just trying to take up my time on the phone. And then right now he calls again. And I got to reject the phone call. It's like, okay, that guy, he's spam blocked. He's just wasting my time. I don't care what other cars he has. I just want people that are easy to work with because I have so much work to do. I have so much work to do that I don't want to waste it on frustrating people. The money is, it's not about the money, people. It's about respect. 